to my film and TV channel. You're all staying safe and well. I've got a bit of a puzzle of a film today. Yes, well, it's a puzzle because it's about a puzzle. Yes, it's a film called Tetris we're going to have a look at today. So we're going to have other people's opinions in now. Before we go, I'll give you my opinion as well. But uh, interesting, interesting feature, that's for sure. Thanks for watching. And please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications. Uh, please, I do film reviews, TV drama reviews, information vlogs, even the odd quiz thrown in from time to time. So it'd be great to have you on board and if you can spread the word. And if you are pushing buttons, if you just push that little like button, thumbs up button, be much appreciated. Just trying to get between, well, trying to get up to 15, between 10 and 15 likes if I can, so it can help me out towards that target. I'd be very appreciative. Right, a biographical thriller the class this has. Directed by John S. Baird and written by Noah Pink. The film stars Taron Edgerton in the lead role, Nikita Efremov, Sophia Lebedeva, Anthony Boyle, Toby Jones and Roger Allen. All these comments and scores I'm going to give you now are as at the 1st of April, April Fool's Day 2023 at 9am here in the UK. So this is this is all true and factual, so no messing about with this lot. Rotten Tomatoes audience, they like it. 4.5 out of 5, 95% positivity. Internet movie database, like it. 2,500 ratings, 7.4 out of 10. I'll probably expect that to drop a little over time. Meta user, Metacritic, the other site we look at, 6.7 out of 10. So all looks good at the moment. So what does it look good about? Well, in the late 80s, you probably know if you were there. If you weren't, you might remember. Hank, Hank Rogers. I always want to say Hank, but Hank Rogers. A Dutch-American entrepreneur travels around the world seeking to secure console and handheld rights for upcoming video games. While attending a Las Vegas trade show, Hank witnesses a demo of tile-matching puzzle game known as Tetris, created by game designer Alexei Pajditov. Something like that, my apologies. Hank immediately becomes interested in selling the rights of Tetris to popular Japan-based company Nintendo, I think we've heard of them, along with helping them develop the first Game Boy. Pajitinov warns against this as in light of the ongoing Cold War, Hank and his family could face punishment from the KGB, those nasty Russians. Tetris was released, as the film was released, not the game, the film was released on March the 31st, 2023 on Apple TV+. Plus. There you go, so that's where you've got to watch it. If you, if you can watch it anywhere else, uh, please do so. Rotten Tomatoes, what about the critics? Rotten Tomatoes, 80%. A positive, that's good. So similar to the public, 132 critics, 6.6 .6 out of 10, we'll take that. 106 rest, but there are some rotten, 26 rotten. Brian Telerico from RogerEbert.com, he was rotten. He said, the cinematic blocks just don't fall into place. Don't know what's wrong with Brian. Brian. I think he's had a puzzling day there. Fresh was Benjamin Lee from The Guardian here in the UK. He said, Tetris finds it's full in the details of contracts and the specifics of deal-making, realising that even when it's not on screen in your hands, it's all one big game. Kevin Mayer, also from the UK for The Times, said, directed by John S. Baird, with the kind of goal for broken band and that aims to encompass all the key themes of the 80s Western greed, Soviet political decay and corruption in one giddy pulse quickening Russia. It is a, it is a rush as well. The website's consensus, they put all their heads together and come up with a statement. While it's nowhere near as addictive or fast-paced as a game, Tetris offers a fun, fizzy, fizzy, I like the word, I'll use that, I'll use that word in a minute, fizzy account of the story behind an 8-bit classic, it was. And Metacritic, the other side to look at, yeah, not as not as infused, 30 critics, 61 out of 100, and it scored anywhere between 40 and 90. 15 positive, 14 mixed though, which wasn't good, and one negative, and the negative guy was Simon Abrams from The Rap, he said, Pokey and unconvincing, Tetris skims the surface of a genuinely curious true story thriller, which too often plays out like a Disney-fied version of the social network. Empire's Dan Jolly No was better on it, he gave it 60 out of 100. He said, while it never quite swims beyond the shallows of its money-minded plot, this fictionalised account of the licensing battle over hit puzzle game Ketra, Tetris is for the most part absorbing and exuberant it is. Hollywood reporters Lovia Giaki. Really liked it. 80 out of 100. She said, more absorbing than your average stream affair, but it also makes you wish the film went further in exploring the ambivalence and the relationship between creative expression and greed. Well, we'll talk about that slightly in a moment. Right, my thoughts before we go on this, as you can see, generally positive. There are there's some negatives. I liked it. I like this very much. I'm going to give this 7 out of 10. Uh, which would rate, a, obviously, a positive on Metascore, Metacritic, and a fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. So all-round uh, all good film. 
good looking, good to watch, good to look at, uh, well acted, some great, I, I, like, I like the Maxwell character, which obviously you know, if you watch it, you know you know exactly who's doing that one. I couldn't help but uh, see Leonardo DiCaprio though in the lead role that Taron Edgerton took off, but uh, I don't know, it's just because DiCaprio's played a couple of similar roles, hasn't he, in the past, and I just kept I just kept imagining it was him or imagining him in that role, but uh, Taron Edgerton did a good enough job. For all its classy presentation, I did feel it lacked a little bit of depth. I think one of the couple of the critics have mentioned there, I did enjoy the pace, and it, the fast pace, and it caught well uh, with it at times a, a dryish story, but it did lack depth. And on that basis, I wouldn't mind a little mini series, not, not too many episodes, say four to six episodes, may have served it a little bit better. This, it, I mean, it may come back and come out better, but it would have lost. We'll use that word again. It may have lost or would have lost some of the fizz we get from this just under two hour telling of the story. But on the basis of a fast paced, quirky drama, that's what I call this. I mean, dramatic license, left, right, and centre, no doubt. It's up there with, with one of the best I've seen uh, certainly in the last couple of years. Anyway, let me know what you think, guys, if you get to watch this. Uh, I, did, I did enjoy it. I thought it was uh, a good watch, a good watch all around, entertaining. Thanks for watching. Till we meet again, the last one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, everyone. Bye for now.